Incap this. I speak this. Get it. Yes. Oh. That's what I'm talking about right there, baby. I love RBGs. I love them. Yo, what's going on, everybody? This is Mystical today. I am bringing you an RBG slash BG Blitz guide for the War Within. I am on the beta. I'm going to go through everything that you need to know to play Mistweaver in RBGs and BG Blitz. And with that said, let's jump right into the video. Why play Mistweaver in BGs at all? And that is because Mistweaver has been the most dominant healer in large healing environments for a very long time. RBGs, World PvP, Battleground Blitz, Mistweaver has been insane and not much is changing going to the war within it's really good and there's a lot of different roles that misweavers have obviously we heal obviously we're going to be peeling out when we need to but something that i've i've always known that it was good but misweaver never had the chance to do it and that's misweavers can actually fly carry and i used to fly carry all the time and like random battlegrounds you obviously can't do it in coordinated rbgs but finally this game mode allows you to fly carry as a misweaver i'm going to go over all the talents you're going to need to know to do that but i think misweaver is just so versatile in this game mode that it's never going to get boring. I can play this game mode, both game modes, for hours on end and not even know it's been that long. So I would say if you want to heal or if you want to be very versatile and have a lot of different roles in RBGs or BG Blitz, I would recommend playing a Mistweaver. The most important part about Mistweaver and healing in general in RBGs and BG Blitz is your role that you play in your team. So your role and the most important thing is to be in the right place at the right time and it's very vague and that's what makes the good healers and rbgs the best and then other people are still learning it still trying to learn it and trying to catch up you need to peel out when you have to or even before you think you have to a good example of this is in battle for gilneas if you're having a team fight at waterworks and you start killing one or two dps one of your healers needs to already start peeling out because those two DPS that you killed are resing and they're probably going to go lighthouse. You know, peel out and just keep, make sure if they're going back to Waterworks, you can go back to Waterworks. So you need to be able to peel out when you can with tools like Lighter Than Air that Mistweaver got. You can actually walk on water. So in Battle for Gilneas and in Arathi Basin, if you need to peel out and cross water, you can. This also helps at Lumber Mill if you get knocked or if you need to peel out, you can roll off and dash. And you can get to a note as fast as possible. But for Mistweaver specifically, because of how much mobility we have, you should be the number one person peeling out if someone has to. All right, so you want to play Mistweaver and you need to choose a race. I will help you with that. I would say there there isn't any better race than Night Elf. I don't even think there's even much else to say on this on this part of the video. Night Elf is just the best. You get Shadow Meld, which allows you to drop combat and allows you to mount up if you need to get out of combat and go peel somewhere. If you need to avoid damage or CC, you could Shadow Meld it. If you need to go for a drink, you could Shadow Meld drink to get you out of combat. So there's a lot of different things that you can do with Night Elf. There aren't... there As far as Alliance goes, you don't want to play any other race. Just play Night Elf. For Horde, I would say maybe Undead is the best race. I, I think that would have to be the best race just because Warlocks, Dragons are pretty common in the bracket. Warriors, so I would say go Undead if you want to take stuns or you know you want to reduce stuns on yourself go orc but undead on horde but if you're gonna play rbgs at all i would highly recommend just playing night elf this is the season one of the war within guide so stats are going to be a little bit hard to get to but you won't be getting hitting thresholds that you'd be getting in like season four because stats on gear is a lot less so i've been playing around nine to ten percent haste it's a bit lower than what you're probably used to on live but most of my gear is haste i do have some verse mastery weapons but I do have a lot of haste on on this gear. It doesn't help that the tier set has a lot of crit on it, and I'll talk about that in a minute. But I go about 10% haste, and the rest in diverse mastery. I think it's fine. I actually prefer mastery. If you want, and it's completely fine, you can play heavy haste verse and just go haste first. That is that is fine. I played both in RBGs last expansion. You will not tell a difference. They are both heal nearly exactly the same. It's just your healing comes from different sources depending on what stat you're playing. But it's completely, in my opinion, completely preference. You can go heavy haste verse and not even focus on mastery. Or you can do a little bit of haste and go verse mastery. Are we going verse mastery with like 10% haste and then everything else into mastery? But again, it's completely up to you. Whichever, whichever one you want, it does not matter. Speaking of gearing, let's also talk about our tier set. So we have a two set and a four set. The two set makes it so Envelop Mist and Renewing Mist healings increase by 10%. And the four set makes it so Vivify extend the duration of Renewing Mist and Envelop Mist on your primary target by three seconds 
up to three seconds. So th- I think they're both really good. The only issue is the stats on these on this gear is just it's just terrible for PvP. Every single piece except for the shoulders have crit for some reason. I I don't know why. So the helm is crit verse, chest is crit verse, the gloves are crit haste, and the legs are crit haste, and then the shoulders are haste mastery. So I have been playing just two set. I think two sets been working fine. So I go with the shoulders, I believe, the gloves, because it gives the most amount of haste, and that's what you want. Outside of that, I just, of course, gear for haste up to about 10% and then verse mastery. I don't know if four set makes that much of a difference. I know it extends Renewing Mist and Velvet Mist when you vivify, but I'd rather just go for two set with the better stats and then focus on going on haste verse and verse mastery and all my other pieces of gear. All right, so you've made your monk, you've got the right gear, and now let's talk about talents. I will start with the left-hand side, then the red right-hand side, and then the hero talent. So on the left-hand side are the monk talents. These are just all the talents that monks get. And there, this is what I would recommend for RBGs. I will go through some of them. There's really not much to say. It's pretty standard. You have the roll slow, which is nice because if you're rolling through people, you're trying to focus on mobility because there's a lot of slows. There's a lot of things that you need to peel out for. You, there's a lot of movement in RBGs, so you always want to keep moving. So I have bounding agility for the extra small little distance for your roll and cheat torpedo. And then I also play quick footed to reduce snares on you by 20%. I think these are really important. Um, outside of that, I actually would recommend, sorry, I want to play Swift R instead of Vigaris Expulsion. Yeah, that's good. That will get you out of one slow, which is really nice, especially versus Warlocks with Curse of Exhaustion that slows you. You could just remove that stair once every 30 seconds, which is nice. You have your port, you have your ROP, you launch Grace as one of your defensives. This is... Just gives you a shield based on your max health. Going into the War Within, you have a lot more health than what you have now. So this is actually a bigger shield, which is nice. You have your Fort Brew, Statue, of course. And then I play Lighter Than Air, which is really nice for peeling out and for just moving around the map. This is what this gives you like a little dash, which is really nice. And there's a lot of fun things you could do with it. I will also go into that later into the video. And But that's pretty much it for the left-hand side. There's nothing too crazy. I do play Dance of the Wind, which gives you an increased dodge chance every four seconds, stacking up to nine times. So if you don't dodge an attack, so if someone doesn't like auto-attack you or something, this you could actually dodge like leg sweeps and kidney shots and stuff like that, which is really nice. So having extra dodge chance is, is kind of nice. But yeah, left-hand side, nothing's too crazy over here. You're just focusing on mobility and defensives. I want to give you some flex talents too. I think that there's one or two flex talents down here. You could technically drop lighter than air if you wanted to and maybe go into healing winds to give you an extra heal from your port. But I really, really, really like lighter than air. You could also go into bounce back too. Bounce back gives you a Damage reduction, so if you get hit for 12% of your maximum health, it reduces all damage you take by 40% for 6 seconds, and this can happen once every 30 seconds. So, RBGs, there's a lot of damage going out, so you could drop that. Usually, I bounce between these two right here. Uh, these two talents, the bounce back and healing wins. If you want both, you can. That's perfectly fine. If you feel like the other team's really good at getting your Dance of Wind bu uh, buff gone, you could also drop that and put it somewhere else. But as far as other talents, uh, if you want, you could... You could go into Todd if you wanted to as well. And then if you really want an extra ability, you can go Celestial Determination. So while your Yulon is up or Chiji's up, you can't be slowed below 90% of your movement speed, which is actually really nice if you queue into like a group with multiple death knights. It's super annoying. But this is pretty much what I've run. I actually think Todd's pretty good, but I don't know what I would go for it. I think you can maybe drop this the strength of spirit. You could go here if you want to. You can go here, anywhere else here. You have one or two flex talents uh, to get whatever you want, depending on the situation. But this is what I've pretty much been running almost every single RBG slash BG Blitz. All right, Mistweaver talents now. And there really isn't much wiggle room for these talents. Half of these talents are fist weaving, so you could already cut that out. Starting off with you're going to get your enveloping mist. You're going to get life cocoon. You're going to come down here, get your comic coalescence, and then work your way to get chrysalis to reduce the cooldown of your life cocoon. This is pretty important. Common coalescence also makes it so whenever you use your soothing mist, you gain a stack, a stacking buff that increases the absorb of your life cocoon which is pretty important in rbgs you want to make sure that when you use it people actually stay alive healing elixir inv uh, invigorating mist this is really important to have so vivify will heal anyone that has renewing mist on them for a certain amount which means you always want to keep your renewing mist rolling you can see i put my renewing mist and then i'll vivify myself 
and these these two get healed because they have their renewing mist on them so that is a very important passive on your mist weaver to get used to doing whether you're in um, rbgs or bg blitz get your renewing mist out there use your vivifies healing elixir is just a good passive defensive revival you normally want to play normal revival instead of restoral uh in rbgs because you want to dispel debuffs do note that this is nerfed in the war within sadly this was nerfed so it only dispels three harmful magic debuffs it Dispels all poison and diseases, but only three magic debuffs. So it doesn't get everything anymore. It is a good nerf, sadly. It, it was long-lived. Revival is really good, but it is nerfed. Coming down the tree, you know, you're going to get your Yulon, Overflowing Mist. You're going to get your Mist Wrap as well. Celestial Harmony just puts a hot on people. And then I play Gift of Celestials, which makes it so your Yulon is a one-minute cooldown. You really want to use it because you just have, you don't have many cooldowns to rotate. So just having one-minute cooldown Yulon is pretty good. And then, yeah, uh, Rapid Diffusion. This makes it so your Rising Sun Kick and Enveloping Mist put out a Renewing Mist, which is really important. This is really important to get your re your Renewing Mist out, and then you can take advantage of your Invigorating Mist. It all ties together. And then this last part of the tree, there really isn't much room for movement here. I really don't think there's anything you could change. Uh, pe Peer into Peace makes it so you could swap your Soothing Mist. So I Vivify, and then I Vivify this person, and then you see my Soothing Mist moves, but I didn't have to swap. I didn't have to press Soothing Mist. It's just moving on its own. It just moves to whoever you Vivify or Enveloping Mist. So that's obviously mandatory. You need to one minute Yulon. You Secret Infusion, so this increases the stat, uh, one of your stats based on what you use after your first Thunder Focus T. So if I Thunder Focus T and I put, uh, and I use Renewing Mist, this should be Haste. Yep, so Haste increased by 15%. So this is this is a good way to get your Haste up. So you can see I get 26% Haste now, and you could do that every, every 30 seconds, which is fantastic. So that's why I don't worry about getting Haste too much and stacking it, because you can always get so much Haste from this talent. And then Invoker's Delight. So you gain 20% haste when you use your Celestial. So I'll wait until my Thunder Focus T is off cooldown. But that is a flat 20% haste. So if I use my Yulon, I'll show you my stats. 31. And then Thunder Focus T Renewing Mist. I have 51% haste every minute. You could do this every single minute. So that's why you don't want to really waste Yulon and RBGs. And I'll obviously go through my cooldowns and how to rotate them and how to use them. But that's why I don't really worry too much about having low haste. Because sure... You know, there is going to be times where I have low haste, but every 30 seconds I can have a, what, 26% haste? And then every minute I can get up to 50% haste. So, you know, that's fine. And then there's also other ways to get stats, and I'll show you uh, how to get that. On the right hand side here, you get Focus Thunders to give your Thunder Focus T two charges of an empowered spell. And again, I'll talk about Thunder Focus T and all that uh, in a minute, but it, Thunder Focus T empowers one of your spells and it does certain things. And this allows you to have two charges of your Thunder Focus T, which is really nice. And then you want your Tier of Mourning, which increases the healing of your Vivify, which is also very important. And then this one, I, I guess technically, if you're stacking haste, these are your two flex talents right here. So you could, these are your two flex talents. If you're stacking haste, you could probably put one point into unison, which is a pretty good talent. And then you could put this other talent maybe into Misty Peaks if you want to. Doesn't really matter where you put it. You, I don't know. I actually don't know where you would put it. <laughs> I really don't. Maybe you could put it into Uplifted Spirits here for uh, extra 15% healing over time from Revival. But yeah, you could put these pretty much anywhere. You could go into Shaylin's Gift. You could actually go into Shaylin's Gift Shadow House Lessons, actually. This is what I would do if I was stacking Haste. Because with the Counter of the Celestials Hero talent, you actually do need Yulon. So I would say if you're stacking Haste, put it into Shaylin's Gift and Shadow House Lessons. If you're not and you're going Mastery, I'd probably go into Resplendent Mist for the 30% chance to do 150% more healing. Uh, from your mastery and just because i know i'll be mentioning flag carrying later in the video these are the talents i use when i flag carry and i'm not memeing this is a real thing that misweavers can do i'm so happy that we can do it now and or that there's a game mode that allows us to do it right hand side nothing really changes it's pretty much the rbg build with crane because you really need chi because this removes all slows from you and makes you immune to slows so right hand side Exact same thing. Just play Chi-Gi. Left hand, left hand side, you're going for all movement speed. So you're getting Tiger's Lust, Bounding Agility that makes you travel further. Jade Walk, so you have increased movement speed outside of combat. You're going to get Quick-Footed and Swift Art that removes the slow on you. 
or a snare on you. So these talents are important. Oh, and then also slash your determination. So you can't be slowed below 90% of your normal movement speed and dance the wind with your four proof for an extra defensive. So you are absolutely going for maximum movement speed on your Miss Weaver with this talent build. I have tested this a lot and this is by far my favorite build that I've run. And if you have any questions about it, let me know. And the newest addition to the War Within are these hero talents. So you have two different talent trees. They both, they this is really awesome. They both have a place in RBGs and BG Blitz. I will go over both situations. But the main talent that you're going to use is Conor of the Celestials. This will be your main healing tree for Mistweaver. It gives you a spell called Celestial Conduit that does a bunch of AoE healing. It does a little bit of damage, but the most important thing is it increases the healing it does up to 30% for each person it heals. So you're going to get full value out of this. It increases by 6% per target. So obviously in BGs and RBGs, you have a ton of people. You have most, most of the time you're around more than five people healing. So you're going to get the full 30% healing, which is fantastic. You channel this while moving and again this healing cooldown i'll show it right now here uh this is the animation you do so much healing you you just do the most amount of healing so this is gonna be your main healing tree as far as the talents go you're gonna start with temple training the healing of enveloped mist and vivifies increased by six percent then you're gonna use you're gonna go into courage of the white tiger and i just want to point out that you get one point for each level so you're gonna have this at level 80 where this, your Tiger Palm and Vivify, so you're going to be casting, so you're going to be Vivifying, has a chance to proc your Zhuen, and this will deal damage to somebody, and then heal somebody for the amount that it deals damage for. Whenever you use Chi Ji or Crane, you have an increased chance of procking a Zhuen. I'll see if I can, see if I can, oh, I, I actually just had a, thought I had a proc there. Yeah, so I know that I had a proc there, because I have Strength of the Black Ox, and I'll show you what that means. So... Yeah, that's really good. This talent is a little weird, so you gain Refreshing Jade Wind when you Chi Ji or Yulon. It's okay. Yulon gives you Heart of the Jade Serpent, so after you consume 10 stacks of Shaylun's Gift, you get a cooldown reduction on your Renewing Mist, Rising Sun Kick, Life Cocoon, and Thunder Focus T by 75% for 8 seconds, which, again, that alone might be worth it to just maybe drop Resplendent Mist and go for Shaylun's Gift. It just depends on how much healing Shaylun's Gift is doing. The next one is the Nyuzu proc that I just talked about. So this procs after your Zhuan proc. So after Zhuan assists you, your next Enveloping Mist cast time is reduced by 50%, and then Nyuzu will grant a shield to 5 allies for 5% of your max health. So if I can get a Zhuan to proc, hopefully I can... I'll Yulon here. I got a Zhuen proc. So you can see Courage of the White Tiger. I'm going to use my Vivify. And then my I have the Gift of the... Or Strength of the Black Ox, which is the Shield. So this makes it so my Enveloping Mist glows. And then I'm going to use Enveloping Mist. And I get a Shield. Where's my Shield? It should be somewhere. I don't know where it went. But I, it gives my next... My five allies a Shield. So this is amazing. Because again, in RBGs, you have five players normally around you. So this is just free healing you'll be getting. Next is Flight of the Red Crane. So refreshing Jade Wind and Spain Crane can have a chance to cause your Chi Ji to grant you a stack of mana T and to quickly rush to people. So your refreshing Jade Wind, this works here. And then you're not really spinning crane kicking much in RBGs. So you don't get much value out of this, but it's still decent because all of these get summoned from your celestial conduit, and I'll show you. Next is you could choose between these two. Uh, it's completely up to you. So Nayuzo's protection, fortifying brew, grants you an absorption shield for 25% of your max health. Obviously, that's crazy. Right, because you have four per here and you have it on like a minute and a half cooldown, which is fantastic. Or you can play Jade Sanctuary, which is what I'm running. So this is a wall. So you heal for 10% of your max health instantly when you activate Celestial Condit and receive 15% less damage for its duration. And then also happens, this lingers for eight seconds after you use your Celestial Condit. So up to you. You can have an extra wall or you can have a big absorption shield every minute and a half. Completely up to you. Um, I like the wall, but... Again, you can play which one ever. GG Swiftness. So your movement speed is increased by 75% during your Celestial Conduit and by 15% three seconds after you're assisted. So you just have increased movement speed from Celestial Conduit, which is fantastic for if you really are desperate, you could use this to like peel out if you have to. But most of the time, you're just going to be using it to heal. And then this one, yeah, you're not going to get, you're not going to play August Dynasty because you're not going to be fist weaving a lot because this is activated when you cast your Jade Fire Stomp. But the inner compass just increases the stats by increases your stats by two percent based on after an August celestial assist you. So I should have a bonus. Yeah, ox stance right here. If I get a Juan proc, any proc from any of my celestials, it'll rotate to another stat. 
it doesn't matter. It's two percent stats, which is nice. It's just passive, which is fantastic. And then unity within. So celestial content can be reset once during its duration to call upon all the celestials to assist you. And then, or this is automatically cast when it ends. So if I press this and I press it again, you're gonna see that it swaps. If I press it again, it'll cancel. But it summons all the celestials, which is absolutely amazing so you can see i have my wall here i have yulon and yeah that is your hero talent for counter of the celestials again this will be your main talent for healing your main hero talent for healing in rbgs i did mention that both hero talents have a fit in rbgs and they do and it is very exciting so this hero talent is master of harmony it doesn't do too it doesn't do too much every time you heal you store you get a buff right here and it stores a percentage of your healing as uh vitality but that's not why you're doing this the reason you're running this hero talent is for flag carrying and i mentioned it earlier yes mistweavers can flag carry and the reason why you're going to use this for flag carrying is because this gives you a second charge of thunder focus t that is absolutely unreal this will give you what so many chi torpedoes and be able to get across the map so much easier so you can just thunder focus t chi torpedo roll chi torpedo dash thunder focus t again Chi Torpedo, dash, Chi Torpedo, dash, Chi Torpedo, dash, Chi Torpedo, and then one more dash. I just went from over here to over here in like, I don't even know how short amount of time. So this is the time where you're going to use Master of Harmony on Twin Peaks and Warsaw Gulch, and you're playing on fly carrying, swap to Master of Harmony because you're not going to be doing much healing anyway and go here. So as far as these talents go, the reason why these are read out is because I'm not playing Chi Wave. If you want to, you can. Again, it's not going to do too much. But the main ones here is, there was one, where was the main one? So this, the Tiger's Vigor makes it so when you cast Tiger's Lust, it reduces the cooldown on your roll. So you can Thunder Focus T, roll, dash, to, uh, Chi Torpedo, dash, Chi Torpedo, dash, Chi Torpedo, dash and then your tiger slash reduce the cooldown of your chi torpedo so you can have another you can have another chance at it so you get the extra charge from thunder focus t and then there was one more oh then right here so mantra of tenacity so this makes it so fort proof grants you 20 percent stagger stagger is pretty much it delays the damage it does on you so when you fort brew you'll be able to just stagger 20 percent of incoming damage and it puts it as a dot on you instead of taking it so any 20 percent of the damage you take will just be a dot on you which is in addition to your four brood damage reduction, which is absolutely insane. So yeah, you're gonna wanna play this for when you feel like carrying. It is absolutely amazing. Next up are PvP talents. Peace Weaver is a mandatory lock-in for Mist Weaver. This is what makes it so revivals cooldown is reduced by 50% and then provides immunity to magical damage and harmful effects for two seconds. This is just amazing. Dispel, you get you can dispel anything without dying, which is amazing. And you can just dispel everything make everyone immune to magic stuff which is great then you want zen focus t because again you still cast all of your spells so you don't want to get interrupted you're going to fall behind you want to play zen focus t and then the last one can be a mix of a bunch of things there you could play eminence if you're flag carrying and you're trying to get to you know survive as long as you can play eminence or if you just want to focus on surviving Eminence is great because Mistweavers are pretty squishy. Character Magic is good into like Balanced Druids and Shadow Priests or Ellie Shaman. So you get the extra healing bonus from dispelling any magical debuffs, stacking up to three times, which is great. It does kind of take a lot of globals to set up though, so you might not have a lot of time to do it. I'm trying to think of anything else. Oh, Thunder's Focus T, of course. So this is what gives you the extra rolls when you're... When you're flag carrying, this is really good for the extra rolls. It makes it so your Thunder Focus T now causes your Crackling Jade Lightning knockback to work immediately. And then your roll or cheat torpedo to refund a charge on use and heal you. So Thunder Focus T will have a lot of weight if you use this. You're definitely going to use this when you fly carrying. If you're flag carrying, by the way, these are your PvP talents. You don't change them. You're going to play Peace Weaver. You're going to play Eminence, and you're going to play Thunderous Focus T. This will give you more rolls. This will give you more survivability, and this allows you to get away and keep you alive. For non-fly carrying, I would still like this. And then this last one, again, you could play Thunder Focus T for the extra mobility with roll. You could play Zed Spheres. I don't see a lot of people playing Zed Spheres, so probably don't, don't play that. I would either go between Eminence or Thunderous Focus T, depending on what you want. And if you feel like you're not going to get, you know, if you feel like you're not going to get kicked, you could drop Zen Focus T and play Eminence. So this gives you survivability, more mobility, 
ability and then your peace weaver for an extra healing cooldown as far as embellishments go the only one i've really tested is the energy redistribution beacon and that i i used two of them because i didn't see any other embellishments that were really worth taking and what this does is while you're above 80 percent health your direct healing also redistributes up to two percent of your max health to your targets so i just stacked two of them it works out pretty well it's like sometimes number seven or eight on my healing so that is the embellishment that i've been using if there's any other embellishment out there i will keep it updated i'll put it in the comments but i think that's the embellishment you're going to be rocking uh two of those before i talk about healing rotation let's just talk about spells let's just let's just talk about spells i always assume that you've never played mystery before if you have you could probably skip this part of the video but i just want to talk about our spells and rotation pretty much starting with let's see what's a healing so expel harm this is a single target heal for you it just heals you that's it just heals you it's nice it's just it's a little heal but you can it helps you stay alive which is nice that's a defensive i'll talk about later soothing mist so soothing mist is the bread and butter part of our rotation enveloping mist has a cast time and vivify has a cast time but when you soothing mist enveloping mist is instant and so is vivify so that's where our soothing mist plays a part it, i mean it's still you can still get kicked on it but it makes those two spells instant which is amazing None of these are healing. None of these are healing. Vivify, I talked about. So this is a single target heal. This is a single target heal. But with the talent Invigorating Mist, it will heal anybody that has Renewing Mist on them. So if I put Renewing Mist on this guy and this guy and I Vivify myself, it'll heal them. Which is really important to take advantage of in RBGs or any part of WoW. Yeah, Renewing Mist should be in there. Okay, oh, there's a Mist Weaver section right here. Okay, so there's Renewing Mist and Enveloping Mist. These are your two major hots. Starting off with Enveloping Mist. This will is a really strong hot and it also puts a buff on people that increases the healing you take by 40% from the Mist Weaver. So normally what I'll try to do, and this is a lot of healing, and I'll talk about Chi Harmony in a second with, with Renewing Mist, but Mist Weaver has a lot of modifiers that you need to pay attention to while you're healing and to min max and one of my favorite things to do is to min max your buffs my gear everything so if you're what you're trying to do to maximize your healing, healing rotation is to min max all of these modifiers and then so enveloping mist gives a 40 percent healing buff from you and then renewing mist is just a hot it's a really good hot but you have a talent here called chi harmony that makes it so the first eight seconds of renewing mist your target takes 25 percent more healing from you and 25 percent is pvp so let me mess over that again. This is 25% increased for the first eight seconds. So a lot of modifiers. I'll try to break it down. You're renewing mists. This is a different icon for the first eight seconds. So they're going to take 25% increased healing from me. It should go away soon. So now it's just no renewing mist. And then your enveloping mist puts a 40% healing buff from you, no one else, from you by 40%. So these two buffs stack. So normally, and I'll talk about this in the healing rotation, you always want to start off with a, a Renewing Mist, and then you can go into like a Thunder Focus Team Enveloping Mist to get the buff. And then that's when you kind of, that's when you can start really doing a ton of healing. And of course, make sure to take advantage of Invigorating Mist. You get your Renewing Mist out on everybody, and then you just start cranking Vivifies so that that heals everybody with your Renewing Mist. And it's, it's super important. Uh, I don't know if there's any other healing spells that we really want to talk about. There's cooldowns that I'll talk about. But as far as healing spells, it really isn't much. It's your Enveloping Mist, your Renewing Mist, your Vivify, and your Soothing Mist. Expel Harm for healing from yourself. But yeah, the healing, healing rotation is uh, sadly the easiest part of this view. I want to talk about Thunder Focus T. What this does is this empowers some of your spells. Uh, Enveloping Mist, it immediately heals for a certain amount. And it's instant cast. Your Vivify will cost no mana. Your Rising Sun get cooldown is reduced. Your Expel Harm gives you more healing. It makes a Chi Cocoon on you. Crackling Jade Lightning does a knockback. And then your Chi Torpedo and Roll gets an extra charge and heals you for a little bit, which is really nice. So that important one is Enveloping Mist. Because right now, Enveloping Mist has a cast time. And so does Vivify. But when you use it with Soothing Mist, they're instant. Right? So you can Soothing Mist. They're instant. But you still have to channel your Soothing Mist. So being able to Thunder Focus the Enveloping Mist is really nice. And... What you're primarily going to use is you're going to use it for your Enveloping Mist or your Vivifies. Uh, you could also use it for Renewing Mist if you want the Haste. So you could start off by Thunder Focus D Haste and then you get the Haste buff and then use your second charge. Because remember, we're playing our Focus Thunder talent that gives us two empowered spells. And you could do that, which is, again, the stat bonus is really nice. So you could absolutely do that. But for the most part, you just want to pay attention to who's dying. If you need to, you could just, if someone's like, you know, 
desperate near need of healing, you can always go for an instant Thunder Focus T enveloping mist. But for the most part, uh, I'm using it for the Thunder Focus T haste into maybe a Thunder into an enveloping mist, just because the extra healing is really nice. You just get the haste from your Thunder Focus T, and then you soon the mist enveloping mist, and they get a big heal. You have a ton of haste. And especially if you have a strength in Nyuzu proc, you can get your enveloping mist. You see all the absorption going out. They get an absorption shield for about 200k, which is amazing. So that's your Thunder Focus T. Focus on getting your new mist out. If you if someone's dying, you can just go for an instant Thunder Focus T enveloping mist. If not, try to maybe use it on your Vivifies for no mana. If not, get the haste bonus from your renewing mist. All right, so let's talk about the healing rotation now. So first thing you want to do is put your statue down. This will give you... More healing, help you get stacks of common coalescence, helps you take advantage of peaceful mending. And you want to just always have stats down, really good healing. You're going to start off by putting out on as many renewing mists as possible. You always want to have renewing mists recharging at all times. And you're also going to have vivacious, vivacious vivification, which makes it so you vivify as instant every 10 seconds. So if you're ever in a situation where obviously it's RBG slash BG blitz, so there's always going to be kicks available. You always want to press your vivify for the instant heal. It'll heal anybody that has your new mist on them. And from there, it's just a matter of what the situation is. If not a lot of people are taking damage, you could just easily just send out some vivifies. Nothing too crazy. Again, you always want to make sure you're using your renewing mists on as many people as possible. So if someone's dying, always try to get that 20, 25% healing buff out. And then it's just depending on the situation, you know, there's really not much to it. That's the fun of it. Thunder Focus T enveloping mist if someone is dying for the extra healing. And if, you know, if there's no kicks available, you can just channel it. Mana T is really important. This gives you 50 per, uh, 30% mana reduction on your spells. So you can always uh, channel that and then spam Enveloping Mist because obviously Enveloping Mist costs a lot of mana. So you want to do that. But that's pretty much the rotation. I'm, the easiest part about Mist Weaver is the rotation. Uh, the hard part is positioning and uh, not dying. And then we have four major cooldowns. We have Life Cocoon, Yulon, Revival, and Celestial Conduit with the new hero talent. So what I normally like to do is I always like to use Yulon first. I don't know. She's a really she's actually a really good cooldown. She gives you extra healing and reduces the cool the mana cost of of, of enveloping mist by 50%. So if you're just trying to start the fight and you're really just trying to not, you know, use mana, use your Yulon. You can go with Thunder Focus T enveloping mist because you want to get that extra haul out and you're just spamming healing at this point. You know, you get the Chica Coon, you got the enveloping breath because you got uh, play that talent and you're just doing as much healing as you can. We got a Chi -Gi, we got a Juen proc there because it procs higher when Yulon's up. So we get an absorption shield on people now. So you're doing a lot of healing. It does uh, 200K shield from the this talent right here after you proc a Juen, which is great. So always try to do that as much as you can. And then if Yulon's down and people are still dying, Celestial Conduit is fantastic because this will also give you more procs from your Juen and from your uh, Nyuza. So you get a proc and then you should be able to just do as much healing as you can. Uh, you should probably try to use your Thunder Focus T before it so you get value out of the Heart of the Jade Serpent because this will reduce the cooldown of your Rising Sun Kick, Life Cocoon, Thunder Focus T during Mist. So make sure you keep all those going. And you can see this whole time I'm just trying to get rid of Mist as much as I can. I'm using my Instant Vivify off cooldown. And I do have a weak order to show it. I have all my weak orders on, on the website uh, that you could take. Whenever there's a bunch of dots going out, if you're playing it's Affliction Warlock and you see Soul Rot and stuff like that going out, that's normally a good time to revival and dispel it. I would say the order you want to trade your cooldowns in is definitely Yulon first. Yulon gives you mana reduction on your Enveloping Mist, extra healing, which is fantastic. And then I would probably use your Revival and Life Cocoon next depending on the situation if there's big aoe damage going out use your revival if there's single target damage going out use your life cocoon and then follow it up with celestial conduit because this gives you the heart of the jade serpent buff which reduces the cooldown of your rising sun kick life cocoon and thunder focus t and it's just gonna the cooldown rate increase by 75 percent for eight seconds so you'll be able to get your life cocoon faster which is amazing you're able to get your renewing mist and thunder focus team back faster so I would hold off on using Celestial Conduit until it's the last button. I spoke about flag carrying in the talent section, and I just want to reiterate some things about flag carrying. You will probably be expected to flag carry. There isn't a there isn't a single other best flag carrier in the game besides Miss Weaver. Even tanks are not nearly as good as Miss Weaver. Maybe Guardian Druid or Demon Hunter tank. Maybe, but Mistweaver can get across the map easily. So some things that I've done to ensure that I get across the map: don't waste your mobility especially when you just get the flag and no one's on you don't don't do that don't waste your mobility to get out what you want to do is as soon as you start to get like 
people start to turn on you, I would instantly Chi G, Thunder Focus T, and Chi Torpedo out and just start dashing. They can't slow you, and you just want to get across the map as fast as possible. That's all you're trying to do. So what you're going to do is, again, Chi G, you can't be slowed, and you're just going to Chi Torpedo, Thunder Focus T, Chi Torpedo, and dash dash away with two charges of thunder focus t being able to affect your thunderous focus t and then you could also tiger's lust to reduce the cooldown on your cheat torpedo or roll and you <laughs> i'm across stormwind <laughs> like i'm literally across stormwind in in like 30 seconds so that is pretty much how i fly carry and then from there you want to put a port down i would be surprised if they didn't change it but right now you can port with the flag which is absolutely insane it does not work with link tether by the link spirits by the way so it's kind of sad but what i do is i'll put my port up top and then i'll try to port back and forth between uh below uh war sun gulch base and twin peaks and then back to the roof because that's just the easiest way to do it and a lot of people don't have mobility to catch up to you but that's flag carrying just try to get across the map as fast as far as possible get to the roof of the base set up your port jump down and just keep pointing back and forth as far as maps go and tips for maps i do plan on making videos for every map for rbgs and bg blitz from a healer point of view there really isn't too much that you need to be concerned about besides keeping your team alive like you really keep your team alive make sure your team is doing the objectives of the map and you will be fine the one thing i do want to note is on maps like arathi basin and deep wing gorge those are really heavy objective things you might not wa even want to heal i think what from my experience from doing them from bg blitz at least is you want to make sure that you're doing the objective and if there's dps that are stuck on the road don't heal them you want to get to a base as fast as possible and i actually play i when i do bg blitz i actually swap to song of chiji so it's easier for me to cap a base and it's very important that you don't spend too much time at a node that is like the biggest tip i can give you for bg blitz for those those uh node maps Team fights are great. Don't stay there too long because it's 8v8. If you're doing a 2v2 at a node, all of a sudden it's now 6v6 somewhere else and it's all a numbers game. R BG Blitz, RBGs in general are a numbers game, but BG Blitz, because there's two less people and there's only one other healer and not two, it's all about numbers. You need to make sure that you're matching numbers, but you're not spending too long at a base. Sometimes you just need to cut your losses and go... Go cap a base somewhere else because it's just not worth it. So that's my biggest piece of advice for those big node maps. Every other map, you're pretty much just focusing on healing and keeping your team alive. You know, you got your fly carrying maps for Twin Peaks and Warsaw Gulch. Cut your losses on Arathi Base and Deepwind Gorge as much as you can. Don't try to team fight too long. Obviously, you want to team fight, but not not too long because you're just going to fall behind. And then Eye of the Storm, you'll just keep your team alive. One piece of advice for Eye of the Storm is the fly cap swaps the nodes. So if you're falling behind and your team has a uh, has a flag, swap that instantly. Make the other team go swap bases and hopefully you can catch them off guard. And then pretty much everything else is just... Just heal. That's pretty much all you got. Temple of Cult Mogu, just heal. Everything else, you just heal. It's really nice. Um, that's why I like RBGs. You just kind of do your role, peel out when you have to, keep your team alive, and hopefully you can get the win. All right, and I hopped over back on live to go over some add-ons you're probably going to need for RBGs. Not a lot of these are mandatory. I'd actually say the really the only mandatory add-on that you need is bge which is battleground enemies this is basically a must-have this shows the entire other team on wherever you want on your on your monitor and you can click and target certain people and you need to get in the habit of clicking it truly uh i know it's for me when i was watching rbg streamers and i thought it was like funny how often they clicked and see where people are but it's actually super important to know where people are especially if the team only has one or two stealthies and you're trying to go for a base or something you always want to know where they're where everyone is on the map that's like one of the most important things you need to have map awareness and know where people are around the map because you want to match those numbers so battleground enemies 100 percent one of the best add-ons that you can get for rbgs outside of that uh capping is another good one. I don't think it is completely updated for BG Blitz. I think it still shows that it caps after one minute when it's actually 45 seconds. So capping still a little weird, but 
still very good add-on it shows like the final score and everything so i would definitely get, get capping as well details is just your damage and healing meters it's not really mandatory diminish so this was updated for the war within it's diminished fixed by jaza which is fantastic this will help with showing drs on players nameplates which i use i think it's really great especially in rbgs you could also look at your bge frame as well that will also show but i like diminish because i don't really like to like look on the other side besides like right in front of me um, outside of that, there really isn't too much. These are just like the, honestly, these are just battle pet add-ons. I'm going to keep it real through. Omni Aureus is really good. This will help you track dots and CC that are on enemy teammates and on your raid frames for your, for your raid members. So this is really good. Omni bar tracks interrupts and other cooldowns. I would probably go with that too. Omni CD don't really, I mean, it tracks your raid members, but as it's, it's okay. I don't really actually don't use it straight up. I don't use Omni CD that much. Um, it doesn't work in RBGs for some reason for me. So I've only used Omni, Omni Auras and Omni Bar. Plater just shows, like, you can have my Plater profile. It just shows. So this, oh, by the way, this right here is Omni Auras right here. So you can see, like, debuffs and you can see, like, CC. I don't know if you can see it. All right, it doesn't want to show up on that one. You can't CC that one. Let me see. I think there's one that you can leg sweep. I think it's this one you can leg sweep. So, yeah, you can see the leg sweep and everything. So that's pretty good. Outside of that, I think that's pretty much it. And then obviously if weak auras. As far as weak auras go, I'm trying to think of any that actually might matter for RBGs. I, there actually is a good one. I'll link this. This one tracks the cooldown resets in Dupe and Gorge, which is really important because you always want to make sure that someone on your team is consistently getting that reset. But that's the only big one I, I, I can think of. The others, I mean, I can't think of any other weak auras where it matter. I do have one that shows like defensives and offensive cooldowns used by some people, but... Um, it, currently it's kind of weird how it interacts right now with, uh, the API changes to blizzard. So I haven't been able to update mine sadly, but yeah, it's overall just make sure you track that reset, but there aren't many mandatory weak orders for RBGs. And that is it for this video. I hope this is everything you expected and more. I tried to talk about pretty much everything that I could. If there's any updates, I will make sure I put a pinned comment at the top and I will update that as much as possible. I will update it with any builds that come about as the War Within launches and season one progresses. And that is it for me. Hope everyone has a fantastic rest of the day. Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you later.